Hey, good afternoon. We are sitting out here. We're actually at the, uh, well, literally at the edge of the fire line um, and uh, talking with our new chief, uh, new fire chief, about what took place here. So, Chief, talk to me and uh, just kind of tell me what took place here in Jones Swamp. Um, you know, did we lose any uh, uh, personal property or anything? And, uh, and, you know, how did we get it contained? Yeah, absolutely. Um, basically, yesterday we had a smaller fire that started. The winds picked up and started pushing it. So we had roughly 70 acres that become fully involved with a strong head wall of flames that was pushing and impinging upon these houses. So through the cooperative efforts of Escambia County Fire Rescue, the Naval Air Station, Florida Forest Service and our other partners, they were able to get in here, put attack lines in between our houses and provide for structural protection. The Florida Forest Service did a good job cutting lines around and previously um, they had conducted some prescribed burns that helped to minimize the fuel load in this instance, which drastically reduced the fire spread to the flanking areas. So all the work that was done wasn't just Escambia County, you say it was forestry, who else was involved? Absolutely, forestry, the Naval Air Station had units over here, um, also law enforcement, and um, a lot of our local volunteers were in the area helping as awesome. well. Awesome, how do we affect command and control? I mean, you get that many players on the field, how do you, who coaches that, how does that work? Through the um, Escambia County Public Safety Division, we have a great communications team that does our dispatching, and they route all those vital communications to get everybody where they need to be based on the incident commander's projections and forecasting what areas are, could be most impacted. So. Yeah, that uh, the emergency operations Center in Escambia County is one of those places where if you want to have real faith in your in how your government works, go and watch how we handle a crisis in that EOC. It is truly epic. Um, so you just took over. How long have you been our fire, our fire chief? This is my second day. So. Second day. Well, uh, well, welcome to Escambia County. Thank you. <laughs> um, so tell me, I mean, so you've got a long history as a firefighter, right? You've been doing this how long? Um, 26 years. 26 years. Have you, I mean, so what, it, it, this is your first look at how we do business. Uh, we did not stage this for you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what uh, do you think? Well, my previous department, we had a lot of wildland urban interface fires and up here I noticed you had a lot of structural fires. So coming up here and seeing you put to the test, I would think that this would be, we'd be shorthanded, but I, I was thoroughly impressed with how they did. It was almost surgical precision, the way the crews got in here and attacked the fire and knocked it down and saved all of these homes. So, yeah. Do we have a cause? Do we know, this was not a prescribed burn that got out of hand, right? Uh, no, at this time it's uh, probably still under investigation. We don't have a cause. Okay, so, it, and it, so then it, we know it wasn't a prescribed burn that got out of hand. Um, so it could have been natural causes or it could have been, you know, somebody flicking a cigarette butt. It could have been just about anything, right? Uh, yeah, it could have been anything. Okay, because that's one of the things that, I mean, a lot of people don't understand about a forest is part of its natural uh, cycle is to catch on fire. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's how a forest rejuvenates itself. And uh, so what are the, what's the significance then of like the prescribed burns? We do those prescribed burns and a lot of people complain about the smoke and everything. But what you, you'd mentioned earlier when we were first started talking that the prescribed burns made this a manageable fire. Mm -hmm. how, is, how does that work? Yeah, prescribed burns, uh, nature, like you mentioned, it has a way of rejuvenating itself. And a lot of that is through the natural act of fire, whether it's through lightning strike, old vegetation. Um, anytime you have an abundant amount of growth over a period of years, you have a heavy fuel load. And that puts these urban communities in jeopardy. So. Uh, being in a coastal region, you have offshore breezes that can uh, impact the fire spread. Um, so anytime you have an opportunity to, to conduct controlled burns, especially in the state of Florida, it's very important that we do so to help reduce the risk, the fuel load um, for future fires. Yeah. So the um, yeah, like the forests were well before last night anyway. They were really green and lush. So it looks like there are plenty like like every like nothing's dry. Um, you know, people are probably dropping their guard a little bit, but the carpet of the forest is always just a tinderbox, right? Yes. So where are we at countywide? I mean, usually about this time of year, we start thinking about, you know, doing uh, uh, fire bans and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, where are we at in terms of uh, public's just a, a, it's an opportunity because people are paying attention right now. Um, should people be, you know, not putting it and making campfires and that kind of thing? Um, yeah, they should follow the recommendations and guidelines that are posted on the public websites through the for Florida Forest Service and through the local officials. Um, anytime the drought index hits a certain level, we will issue burn bans and stuff to let people know. Yeah, and we're not quite there yet. Not, not at this time, but it, we're right on the cuff, cusp of it. Okay, so 
even though it's not a burn ban, you can still do the right thing without the government telling you to do it. So, uh, you know, clearly it doesn't take much for a fire to get out of control and take up, what, 70 acres? 70 acres. Yeah. 70 acres. And actually, I was driving around on the other side uh, over by Weller and... Um, I mean, there's, there's not, it's not just this neighborhood that it was in danger. We had a, quite a few. Uh, and I'm assuming that once it shifts over from just being a forest fire into a structure fire, what does that do in terms of, uh, of the difficulty level and the amount of manpower it takes? Well, that's, that makes it a whole different game. Uh, you need additional resources first because structure fires require 15 firefighters on scene to safely mitigate those. So when you have crews that have already been working, putting in hard work over a period of time, they start to become fatigued, and then you even need more resources. So it would have multiplied the problem. You know, that's something I've always noticed from the fires that they have out west, which are so much more uh, you know, expansive than this. Um, in the first 72 hours, 96 hours, um, they seem to kind of have it, uh, you know, it, it works like a well-oiled machine. But as the human machine starts to break down, mistakes start to be made, and then you start losing your heroes. Yeah. Um, you know, and so when those fires rage on for a week or more, um, you know, that's when you really see those guys in grave danger. So I, I could imagine that once, you know, you're saying 15, it jumps over to do a structure house, that's 15 firemen. Each structure, each other neighborhood, that's another 15 firemen. It doesn't take long before you run out of resources. Absolutely. So. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, very, very noticeable that you know, that's uh, maintaining these things in the, uh, in the forest. Obviously, everybody wants to, to maintain them and keep them out of damaging uh, you know, property and life, but um, it, the, the cost grows exponentially once it comes out into the neighborhood. So, um, you know, this kind of a fire line that you, that, that's dug here, um, you know, it's, it's ugly, it's aggressive. Um, but it's necessary um, to, to, and it, it may seem you know, like, well, that was, that was too much. But what you wouldn't want to do is be waking up this morning saying we should have done more. Um, so, yeah. you know, this containment is, I mean, it's classic. The forest behind us will look lush and green again by the end of the summer. Um, you know, but how much longer? Because there's, I mean, I see a couple of hot spots where it's still smoking. I mean, uh, do we, shouldn't we be putting those out? What do you, what, why are we leaving that like Well, we recommend anything that's inside the burned area is going to continue to burn for a period of days or weeks, depending on we get a significant rainfall. Um, some of that, um, we ask residents, uh, you're going to have smoke nuisances, basically is what we call them, um, smoke scares. If you do see any flames that appear to jump the fire breaks or something, that's when you need to call 911 immediately and we'll be out there to extinguish those flames but anything within the burned area will be allowed to continue to burn out and then it just completely gets rid of that fuel. Okay well we often say in Escambia County that the citizens are the eyes and ears of their own government so um, citizens should be keeping a lookout but when they see something like these fires these small fires that are inside the fire line uh, that's not anything to worry about uh, and certainly don't go into that fire line for any reason to try to put that out. Absolutely uh, it's, not. It's doing its job. It's exactly the way it's supposed to go. Um, but be very attentive outside the fire line. Now, if you're in a home that is right alongside that burn line, what should those folks be doing? Uh, basically just continuing to monitor the area and stuff. We have forestries on site and they're going to be here for the remainder of the duration, making sweeps around the perimeter, checking the burn area to make sure nothing gets out of hand. But the citizens should just be keeping their eyes on the fire area as well. And if anything whatsoever causes them concern, just call 911 and we'll be more than happy to get out as quickly as we can to okay. check it out. Kids, pets, keep all that. There's, there's, there's nothing the good area. in there for a kid or a pet nope. to be in there. It would be dangerous for people to walk around the fire lines. They can trip over yep. stumps and snags and so, get injured. In a situation like this, the wildlife, and I'm getting a little bit out of your area, I'm kind of wishing that Tim Day was here, our, uh, one of our, our science guys, but the wildlife moves out, obviously. Um, so you're, if, you're in, if you're just over the fire line, you're more likely to come into contact with, say, raccoons, uh, uh, you know, snakes, snakes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So they should be more attentive of that kind of thing as well. Yep. Um, and again, just contact the county. We have experts that can come out here and take care of that. So uh, sorry, I, I hijacked a little bit of your time, yeah. um, but I'm just trying to think in terms of what the citizens do next. So if they see burning and smoldering and smoke for the next week to 10 days, that's actually, that's normal, right? Sure, that's absolutely. what's expected. Mm -hmm. All right, outstanding. Is there anything else really that the people of Scambia County ought to know about what's taken place here in the last couple of days? Um, I think just knowing that having confidence in their government, that it's working right for them, it's providing the services to make sure they're safe and secure in their homes and that um, they have the best personnel working for them here in Escambia County. Yeah. 
Well, Chief, welcome to Escambia County. Um, clearly, you've taken over the head of a, uh, of a, of a great machine. Um, you know, we've got some things in our, in our recent past that need to be cleaned up, uh, but taking care of the citizens of Escambia County is the strong suit of your department. And uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I mean, as I was looking at these reports coming in, uh, you know, and I was kept you know, constantly uh, informed as it was going on, uh, I just felt like, wow, this, I mean, every, every piston in this engine is firing on, at, on order. So uh, congratulations on a job well done, um, and uh, I look forward to seeing uh, you know, what else you do on those other aspects of, of, the, of, of you know, uh, evolving our fire services. Um, clearly, we've got the right man in the right place at the right time. So thank, you. thank you very I much. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Yeah.